Okay, so now let's start off with Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked, so after the seven churches, ah, this is after the church age. Now, how many whiners do you hear at the internet after the tribulation? After the tribulation. After the tribulation is the rapture. No, look at this. After the church age, there's a rapture. That means it's pre-tribulation. Remember, what does pre-tribulation mean? It means before the tribulation. Before the tribulation, there is a rapture. We're going to see that. So John is speaking. After this, I look. So after John experienced the whole church age right here, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. So John sees a door opened up in heaven in this pre-tribulation rapture. Why is there an open door right here? I'll tell you why there's an open door. Because you kept the closed door all that stinking time. So now that uh, there are these carnal Laodicean Christians going like this with the closed door, and then if you're saved in Jesus Christ, God is going to force that door open one day and say, come up hither, and then it doesn't matter. You say, no, I'm not ready yet, Jesus. I'm not ready. I want to stay in the world a little longer. I want to enjoy my life. I want Nope, God says, boom, you go up. You close the door on Jesus long enough, Jesus Christ is about to open the door. He's going to put his foot on it and kick it and say, come up hither, coming home with me. A door was opened in heaven. So this is up in heaven. See that? So we're at the right path here. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet. So John hears a first voice. Why does he say first voice? Because there's going to be different voices later on throughout the book of Revelation. This is the start. What begins the end time era before you hear the other voices is that you're going to hear this first voice right here. which I heard was, as it were, of a what? Trumpet talking with me. This voice that he hears, which is a first voice, is a trumpet voice. So this is not, pay attention now, notice it's not a trumpet instrument itself. It's a trumpet voice. So what is a sound that a trumpet makes? It's trump. So in your Bible, that's why you're going to notice the word trump in your Bible. And then you're going to see trumpets. So in the tribulation, what's going to happen, I'm going to teach it later on. I'm not going to teach it right now. But in the tribulation, you're going to see trumpets sounded by an angel. Right here is the trump of God. Angels take the trumpets and sound it off. God, he's going to use his trumpet voice and speak to them. So that's the distinction between the trumpets in the tribulation and then right here at the pre-tribulation. Now here's another thing. Notice it's a trumpet talking with me. Thus we know it's not a trumpet instrument. This is a trumpet voice here. Do we get that? Okay, which said... Ah, so this trumpet voice is going to speak. Come up hither. Someone's going to say, come up hither here. What does come up hither mean, pastor? That means a rapture. This is your evidence of a pre-tribulation rapture. What do you mean? I don't see a pre-tribulation rapture right here at Revelation 4. You're not paying attention. You're not paying attention right here. If you don't believe come up hither means being raptured, go to Revelation 11. Keep your hand here. Go to Revelation chapter 11. Let's see if this means going up to heaven. Well, one, if you continue to read Revelation 4, you're going to notice John goes up to heaven. Yeah. So that's like a duh statement right there. But a second one is Revelation chapter 11. And notice what the Bible says at verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven, saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. 
So notice right here that these particular individuals, they got raptured up to heaven. Where's the word rapture? It doesn't have to say rapture. It said ascended up to heaven. So that is your rapture right there. They went up to heaven. Now, if that's not a rapture, I don't know what you want to call it. What do you want to call that? All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 4 again. So notice that John is, experienced this rap is experiencing this rapture. Come up hither. Why? And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So God's going to show John what's going to happen at the future in the tribulation. So God's going to show him all the future. Now notice right here, and immediately I was in the spirit. So this is a immediate transaction, this rapture. So this is why I believe that at the pre-tribulation rapture of Christians, it's going to be immediate. This is why I believe in that. Because this is uh, when God speaks out, then what's going to happen is it's not like there's some transition of time where you go through some kind of transformation and stuff like that. No, when God says come up hither, he means what he says. He means up we go. So that's why I believe it's going to be an immediate transaction right here. And immediately, notice what John says, I was in the spirit. So he transforms himself into a spiritual state. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. So John, he sees a throne up in heaven and one that sat on the throne. And he sees someone sitting on this throne up in heaven. Okay, let's go one at a time right here, shall we? Fascinating, your book. Amen. Bible's always a fascinating book. Okay, so now we're up in heaven right here. The door is open. You go in. John sees this throne up in heaven. Okay, let's first cover the critic's argument. So there's a different group called post-tribulation. Post-tribulation means after the tribulation. These people do not believe in a rapture. They believe the church will go through the tribulation. Now notice from this chart, the church does not go through the tribulation. The church goes up before the tribulation. The evidence was Revelation 4, 1 through 2. See, there's a rapture before the tribulation is unleashed. John says, after I looked at this, then what happens? I experienced this. See, so what happened here? The church went up. The post-tribulation people, they either do not believe in a rapture, or they do believe in a rapture, but they believe this rapture will be sometime in the middle or after the tribulation. The point with post-tribulation is that the church will go through the tribulation either way. Okay, that's the point of post-tribulation. Now, why are we pre-tribulation? Because we do not believe the church has any part in the tribulation. We go before the tribulation starts off. The critic side of the argument is this. Verse 1 and 2 is talking about just John. It's not talking about the church. So that's how they'll argue. Well, that's pretty fair. But here's the thing. How do you not know that John is experiencing the rapture of the church? You might say, why would that make sense? Well, that would make sense because chapter 2 and 3, John is experiencing the churches over there. So you got to understand this. John is in a world where he's experiencing with the church. So you got to open up to the possibility, possibility at least, that John is experiencing the rapture with the church. Okay. Second one, why do we believe that uh, this is a rapture of the church? Because scripture was scripture. It's that simple. Okay, so let's see right here. Door opened in heaven, a trumpet voice, and then immediately you go up and you're in the spirit. Correct? Okay, let's look at the Christian rapture. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians 4. Two places. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15. So we're going to see two passages right here. Now this is undoubtedly the Christian rapture. Where's the word rapture in your Bible? Oh boy, I don't know what you've been reading, but just look at verse 17, 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be what? 
caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the where? Air. Air. And what? So shall we ever be with the Lord. See, we stay up with God. Rapture is a Latin word from raptor, meaning snatched, caught. It says caught up together. There you go. There's rapture. Are you satisfied? So notice right here that there is a rapture. But so we know that there's a rapture. But how do we know this is before the tribulation? Well, the thing is this, is that this rapture, so far we know this is about John. Let's not say the church. Let's say John. Okay? Can we all agree this is John so far? Yes, because we read Revelation 4, 1 through 2, correct? All right, so we know this is all John, but let's see the Christian church here. The Bible says that Revelation chapter 4, verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a what? Shout with the voice of the archangel and with the what? Trump of God. Wait a minute right here. What did John experience? Not a trumpet from an angel, but the sound that a trumpet makes. That's what Trump means, a sound that a trumpet makes. But he also hears the voice right here. He also hears a shout from God. So we see right here, there is no doubt John is sharing that same experience that Christians are experiencing the rapture of 1 Thessalonians 4. Now, you want some more proof? Let's look at more proof. Let's look at 1 Corinthians. Keep your hand there. Keep your hand there. And let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 15. So remember, John said, immediately I was in the Spirit, correct? Okay, let's see what happens right here. Verse 44. It is sown a natural body. That's talking about our bodies. It is raised... See, we're going to resurrect into a what? Spiritual body. Remember, John was in the spirit immediately, right? Notice that we're transformed spiritually. But how quick? Look at verse 52. Uh, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? Changed, comma, how fast? In a moment... In the twinkling of an eye. Amen. Boom. That's what John experienced right there. Again, John undoubtedly shared this experience that we're going through. You want more proof? Notice it says right here, at the last what? Trump. It's a sound a trumpet makes. For the trumpet shall sound. That's right. Because it's a trumpet voice of God. Not just a trumpet instrument itself because we looked at all the other verses. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be what? Changed. See, there's a transformation. There is no doubt that's what John experienced. You want more proof? Looking back at Revelation 4, go back to Revelation 4. Going back to Revelation 4, look at verse 1. Look at Revelation chapter 4, and we'll read verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a what? Door was opened in heaven. Ah, wait a minute. So then there's a door up there in heaven where we can hear the voice and enter. Look at John chapter 10. Look at John chapter 10. Scripture with scripture. Always scripture with scripture. John chapter 10, verse 1. John chapter 10. And then we will read verse 1. Notice what the Bible says right here concerning about the voice. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the what? Door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. Okay, we know who the shepherd is. That's Jesus, right? <clears throat> so Jesus has the right to go in and out this door where God is up in heaven. Verse 3, to him the porter openeth. That's right. So the porter opens that door so Jesus can come in. Why? Because Jesus has access 
It's very interesting when you study the word porter in your Bible. You're going to find out it has to do with some kind of rapture calling and people entering in God's kingdom. It's pretty interesting. So this is all tied together. So there's no doubt this is something like a rapture here. Okay, but let's keep reading. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep, that's us, hear his what? Voice. Remember his voice? The trumpet talking? Okay, let's keep reading right here. Uh, verse 3. And he calleth his own sheep by name. See, he's addressing you. And leadeth them what? Out. out. He's leading you out of there. You're getting out of there to get inside the door. You're getting out of this earth so that you can enter God's throne up in heaven. Amen. That's something, right? You'll notice when he calls you, he calls you what? By what? Name. So we know this. We know he's going to say, come up hither at the rapture. But here's something important to understand. He's going to address your name too. You might say, why is that? Pretty simple. Have you ever, when we get resurrected and go up to heaven, think about all the previous resurrections in the Bible. When Jesus Christ resurrected Jairus' daughter, he didn't say to rise. He, if he said rise, then all the dead would be resurrected. He said, Tabitha, see, he was speaking to that girl. He was addressing that girl, saying, arise. Yeah, amen. Think about Lazarus when Jesus resurrected him. He didn't say, come forth, and all the tombs would be the night of the dead, pretty much. What Jesus said, Lazarus, he said his name, come forth. That's why he resurrected. Amen. That's why there is no doubt when he says, come up hither, when he resurrects you, when he gets you up in heaven, he's going to add your name too. Ain't that something? Amen. He's going to say one day, Gene Kim, come up hither. That will be awesome. Amen. Amen. That'll be awesome. Uh, let's look at the book of John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Now notice concerning the noise where people were hearing, but it actually turned out to be the noise of God. We're going to look at John chapter 12, and then let's see right here. It will be on verse, oh, yep, we're going to look at verse 28. So Jesus is speaking to God, John 12, 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, right? Kind of like that voice that God made when he was speaking to John down there. Saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. So notice, remember John 10? The sheep know his voice and hear his voice. But those who are not his sheep, the other people, the strangers that Jesus warned at John 10, they don't recognize the voice of the shepherd. To them, they're going to think this is some kind of alien language that's speaking, some angelic being, celestial being, these outer space people. We're going to use our technology and start to translate this and find out what's really going on. That's why the alien stole all these people at the rapture right here. That's what they're going to be speaking as a rational explanation to all the world. So it's the aliens that kidnapped them, etc. Other people, they're just going to hear a noise, say that it thundered. They're going to think that it thundered. It's just a noise. So to them, that's why to the people, they're going to hear this huge, loud, bam, like that. And people, like at a blink in a moment, they're going to go, what is that? <clears throat> and then your unsaved buddy next to you says, what is that? And then you're gone. It's like, then he's really panicking. What is going on right here? And he's panicking. But you know, you're like, he's calling me. And that's why the sheep says, bat, bat, and listening to the shepherd, we're going up. I'm following you, Jesus. What a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Hey.